Hey artists, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about six habits of successful artists. Let's jump in. All right, so we all want to be successful artists and sometimes it leads you down the rabbit trail of thinking, okay, so here's a successful artist that I idolize. I love everything they're doing. They seem to have it all figured out. What are they doing that I'm not? So I'm going to go over six habits of successful artists and these are actually super achievable things. So don't stress out. You can start to implement these into your own art practice and you are definitely going to see some really good results. So the first habit of successful artists is that they don't wait for inspiration to strike. Instead of just waiting for that big, beautiful burst of inspiration that just fills you with so much energy and vim and vigor to create, they don't wait for that to happen in order for them to create artwork. They persist even when they aren't being fueled by that big, fiery burst of inspiration. Because let's be real, if you are always waiting for inspiration to strike you in order to start creating artwork, you might be waiting a long time. Creativity is one of those things that tends to replenish itself indefinitely. And the more you use those creative muscles, you're going to train yourself to be more creative and you're going to find more inspiration in smaller moments. And you're going to be able to persist even when you don't have that big fiery burst of inspiration that we've all experienced at some point in time. So if you persist and work through it, even if you are not super, super inspired, you're definitely going to be on a path to be a successful artist. Another habit of successful artists is to work without distractions. I know we live in a very distracting world. Even having your smartphone in front of you is a huge source of distractions, endless distractions. So to reduce the amount of distractions, you can, for instance, put your phone in another room or turn off notifications. Another thing you can do is even set up your art creating station, your little studio space, so that you have everything you're gonna need for that painting session right there. So that if you discover, oh, I need this specific paint, but it's put away, you having to get up, go find it, is really taking you out of the zone. So if you set up your station beforehand, it's going to help you get more into the zone and be a lot more successful. Another thing is actually setting boundaries and carving out time that you will dedicate to creating artwork. So this might mean setting boundaries with your family that you live with, saying that, okay, from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. on this specific day, I'm going to be creating, I don't want any distractions, that is what I'm doing. Sometimes that's what it takes, but also sometimes we have to set boundaries with ourselves and setting it with someone else can be a huge step to making your brain realize that, hey, this art practice is really important to me. Therefore, I am going to set aside this dedicated time to it and hopefully distraction-free dedicated time. So another habit of successful artists is that they create a lot of work. They are very prolific when it comes to the creation of their artwork. So the entire journey of creating a piece of artwork is exactly that. It's a journey and it will get smoother over time. But sometimes you have to push through and just create more artwork to be able to get better, get faster, get more efficient and ultimately become more skilled when it comes to that art practice. And if this means that you have to start working physically smaller, working on smaller pieces of artwork instead of big, huge canvases so you can get more done and get through an entire painting process for each piece, then that might be a good challenge for you to start. In the beginning of an artist's journey, a lot of times they struggle with finding their signature style and when you aren't creating a lot of artwork from start to finish, 
it can take a long time for you to actually develop that personal style. But one of my favorite ways to get really clear on what your personal style is when it comes to creating artwork is to create a series of art where you are creating these smaller pieces but in a larger quantity. Even better if they're all related in a nice tidy art series. But this can be a really great way to become a more successful artist. So another habit of successful artists is they study the masters. And what I mean by this is yes, studying the historical art masters. There are endless programs on this. You can even just open up one of their uh, pieces of artwork and try to emulate it, learn from their techniques. This is a really great way to learn. And the thing is, is that you are always learning. So rather than letting that fact stress you out, revel in the fact that you will always be learning and start chasing it instead. So you can also study more modern artists that you really admire. Try to take a moment to break down what makes them special, what their techniques are, what makes their art stand out among the crowd and why you love it so much. Consciously think about these things and you can actually start to study them and see what makes them the successful artists that they are. So the next habit of successful artists is to repeat the work until you're satisfied with it. So let me give you an example. Let's say you wanna get really good at painting wolves. In order to get really good at painting wolves, you need to paint a lot of wolves. So I personally don't practice painting human portraits because I don't paint human portraits. But at this point, I can practically paint a barn owl with my eyes closed because I have painted so many barn owls in the past. So if you, let's say you got a commission to paint a beautiful wolf and you wanna get really good at it, what you can do is open up a new page in your sketchbook and draw as many wolves in that space as you can. Really focus on it, look at tons of reference photos, different angles, different things like that, and create as many drawings and paintings of those wolves as you can. And inevitably, you will get a lot better at it. Practice makes progress, and that is just beautiful. So the final habit of successful artists that I'm gonna talk about today is that they practice discipline. And what I mean by this is that they don't hop around ideas, they intentionally create artwork. There's something called shiny object syndrome and typically that is when you get a spark of a new idea and you completely derail everything you are working on currently in order to chase that idea. Now, successful artists, they still will experience those bursts of new ideas, but they're able to act with intention and decide whether or not it's actually a good idea for them to follow that inspiration. I want you to think of some of your favorite artists. Ask yourself how many subjects they typically create in their artwork. There's a pretty good chance that it's a relatively small number. And the reason why is because they have really narrowed down what they have done. They haven't allowed themselves to constantly hop between different ideas every time they get that new spark and they act with more discipline. And what happens is when you act with more discipline, you are gonna get a lot better when you are acting with that intention. You are gonna become more skilled. And yes, sometimes experimenting is exactly what you need in that moment. But if you are deep in the middle of an art series, maybe it's not the best idea to completely jump ship and try something completely new. And hey, if an idea keeps bugging you, even though you're kind of ignoring it, write it down and you could even revisit that later at a later date, especially if that idea keeps returning back to you. Clearly it means something to your mind, so write it down and you can revisit that idea at a later date. All right, so that brings us to the end of our six habits of successful artists. I would love to hear which one of these you wanna to start to implement first. So make sure you leave a comment and let me know which of these habits that you wanna start implementing. 
All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Do you dream of painting realistic wildlife, but you just, you don't know where to begin? Then consider this your personal invitation into the Wildlife Painting Academy. Get access to a large library of real-time, in-depth tutorials, and learn how to paint your favorite animals easily. Check it out in the link of the description of this video.